If you enjoy this video, please consider giving a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you have any ideas for future videos, share them in the comments section below. So as you listen to me telling this story, you can take a moment to get yourself comfortable and allow your eyes to close. And with your eyes closed, listening to me talking in the background, you can begin to drift comfortably asleep. And I don't know whether you'll drift comfortably asleep to the sound of my voice or the spaces between my words. And as you drift comfortably asleep, so you can take a moment to listen along to this story. And imagine there's someone who's out for a trip in some woodland and they're walking through the woodland, walking through that woodland comfortably and calmly and they're just taking in the environment. They're walking through that woodland, they can hear each footstep that they're taking. They can feel each footstep, they can feel the solidity of the ground beneath each step as they walk through the woodland, as they follow that path. And while they follow that path, they can notice the colours of the trees, those different shades of greens, the browns of the different barks, some bark being grey. And they can look around and notice all these things. And they can notice off in the distance, when they stop and carefully look, that there's a stag, and they can see it blending in with the woodland, with its brown fur, blending in with the brown of the bark of the trees. And they can notice how stationary it is, how it's just watching them, just as they are watching it. And they can hear the rustling leaves as the wind blows a breeze, and yet down here, inside the woodland, there's barely a breeze at all, as the trees block that breeze, and so they carefully and quietly continue walking through the woodland, wanting to be able to enjoy nature, wanting to be able to notice things like stags and other deer, notice squirrels, notice other wildlife, different birds, without distracting the wildlife. And so they very carefully walk through that woodland. And while they carefully walk through the woodland, They're aware, on this morning walk, how the sun is gently rising in the sky. And they can't see the sun from within the woods. But they can notice the dancing shards of sunlight that pass down through the canopies, that dance on the path in front of them, as the trees blow in that breeze. And they can feel the warmth of the air. And they walk through this woodland, heading towards a meadow. And they know that out in this meadow, there's a lake and there's a space for them to stop and enjoy a moment's peace and quiet. 
So they continue through the woodland, taking photos of different things as they go, really enjoying that feeling of being one with nature. And they can notice the brightness in front of them at the end of that path where the meadow begins and they walk towards that bright light passing out into the meadow instantly being hit with an increase in the feeling of the warmth from the sun Noticing the clear blue sky, perhaps the odd cloud. Noticing the movement of grass, the movement of wild flowers, as that breeze blows across the ground. And noticing as they look off in the distance, the way that that moves in waves. And they have that thought. You don't really notice that the wind comes and goes in waves, just like waves on the ocean. But when you can see the grass, you can see how a dark band passes across the grass. And the dark band is just shadow, just from the folding over of the tops of the grass as a wave of wind hits that area. But they can see how that passes in one direction, from the distance getting closer, and how they barely notice it closer because of their perspective, but they can see it on hills in the distance. And they walk through the meadow and they notice how each footstep in the meadow feels different and sounds different to each footstep that was in the woodland. And they walk slowly, gently through that meadow, taking the odd photo of butterflies, of dragonflies, of different insects, of bees, enjoying going about their daily life in the meadow, darting in and out of different plants. And they walk toward the lake, While they walk towards the lake, they can have some thoughts come to mind as they drift into a reverie. They drift into an inner daydream because there's something about this kind of environment that allows the comfort and the freedom for your mind to wander. And they start off by just getting the odd glimpse of some imagined place. Something they're not really sure of, something that they just really want to grasp, but can't quite grasp it. Because at the moment they're in the process of walking, deciding where to go, while also trying to be in their mind, enjoying this reverie. So they try and hang on to it for a while, just as they approach that lake. And then as they reach the lake, 
they place a mat down on the floor. They sit down on that mat. They have a little drink of water. They take a few deep, comfortable breaths to breathe in that fresh air. They notice all they can hear are natural sounds around them. They notice the sound of the very gentle lapping water on the shore of that lake. They look out across the lake and see dragonflies darting around, flying impeccably at tremendous speeds with agility. They notice the odd bloop on the surface of the water as fish sometimes pop their mouths out of the surface. They notice the gentle rippling of the water across the lake and the colour of the water. The fact the water kind of has a colour and yet is also see-through. They can see through to the bottom of the lake. And it's not a particularly deep lake. But as they gaze through into the water, they can see fish darting around in little shoals. They can see some larger fish swimming slowly and gracefully on their own. They can see long green leaves waving very gently, almost like they're moving in slow motion in the water. They can see stones on the bottom, rocks on the bottom. They can see what looks like moss in certain areas on the bottom. And as they move their head near the water to get a good look, they can smell that freshness of the water. And they sit back on the mat, resting themselves back against a bag that they've brought with them. And they close their eyes. And they breathe in and they breathe out. Making each out-breath longer than each in-breath. To begin to induce deep relaxation. They breathe in. And they breathe out. And with each out-breath. With their eyes closed. They begin to get a sense of that reverie they were having. Just the odd flash of light and colour and movement. And then gradually as they breathe in and breathe out, that reverie begins to feel more real. And they become less aware of sitting there on the edge of that lake. They know their body is sat there on the edge of that lake, but they're drifting off in a reverie. And they drift and float inside their mind, drifting, floating, dreaming. And they find themselves walking through a huge open grassland and they don't know where they're walking to 
or what they're walking for, but they're walking through this grassland. And they realize they're walking along, holding the reins of a horse, and they've got a white horse that they're leading. And they feel the breath of the white horse on the side of their arm, and the warmth of that horse. And they reach with their hand and touch the neck of the horse and stroke that horse's neck and feel the warmth of the horse's neck and the softness of the horse's fur. And they can feel the strength of the horse through the reins they're holding. and the sound of the horse breathing. They can notice the horse sometimes becoming distracted and looking around it. And they have to keep just getting its attention back and keeping its head forward. And they look at the horse, they look into the horse's eye See its ears moving. Pay attention to its mane. And they keep looking down the horse. And then they see that there's what looks like a princess or someone in the most beautiful dress sitting on that horse. And they don't know who this is. But they've obviously given up their space on the horse for this woman to be sat on the horse. And so they go with the flow in this reverie. They assume that in this dream they must know what they're doing. So although it's just a reverie, so they're quite lucid and aware that they could have some control in the dream. They like the idea of seeing how this is supposed to pan out. So they continue just walking with that horse. And the woman's being very quiet. She just is looking around. She seems very friendly and pleased to see you. And the person continues walking along with that horse. And they don't strike up a conversation with the woman on the horse. They just look around, trying to work out where they might be going, what they might be doing. Trying to find some kind of reason for this. What they're supposed to be learning from the experience, or whether they're supposed to be learning anything at all. And they notice that at first glance it looked like they were just walking through a vast open grassland. And they're able to notice that there are some high hills around the grassland on one side. They're able to notice there's woodland off in the distance on the other side. They're able to notice that it looks like there's some kind of a river or a stream off near the woodland. But they hadn't at first noticed that the grass that they're walking on appeared like it had been slightly trodden, like people perhaps occasionally took this route, almost like a path somewhere. And so they carried on following this path, 
gazing off in the distance, wondering what might be out there. Where might they be heading? And then they noticed, way, way off in the distance, near the hills, nestled among some trees, was a white castle. And they felt maybe that's where they're heading. And so they continued walking towards that white castle. Seeing how this was going to pan out. And after some time of walking, enjoying peace and quiet, just walking along with the horse and the woman on the horse, they heard a loud growling sound. They didn't know what the sound was, where it was coming from, but they heard a loud growling sound coming from somewhere up in the sky, off in the distance. And then shortly later, the growling sound got closer and louder, and then closer and louder. And then they heard some swooping sounds. Before all of a sudden, this giant dragon slammed down in front of them and the horse, startling the person. slammed down with a loud thud, making the earth vibrate. And the dragon spoke with a low, rumbly voice, demanding the return of the princess. And the person knew what they wanted to say and what their view was and was also a bit scared by this but at the same time didn't want to say anything but wanted to let this character do the talking and wanted to go along for the ride and experience how this is going to play out. And the person let go of the reins, put them over the horse's head, handed them to the woman on the horse, and calmly walked towards the dragon. And while walking towards the, the dragon, they calmly breathed deeper and more comfortably. until they were stood almost nose to nose with the dragon, dwarfed by the size of the dragon. They could feel the warmth of the dragon's breath. They could hear the dragon's breathing. And they faced both palms outwards. And they spoke in a gentle yet commanding tone. That they're going to pass. They're going home. That they're not scared of the dragon. And the dragon seemed to get angry by this and raised its head up and let out a powerful burst of fire 
in the direction of this person, who in an instant pulled a shield around in front of them, blocking the fire, deflecting it around themselves, remaining cool behind the shield. They then put the shield back behind them, and again calmly said, We're going home. And calmly and assertively, told the dragon what will be happening. The dragon got angry again, let out another burst of fire, and again this was protected by the shield. And again they reiterated, we're going home. They didn't let themselves get intimidated. They didn't let this dragon get the better of them, or take control of the situation. And in frustration, the dragon lost all its power and ability to remain angry. Because it reached a state of confusion and had no idea what it could do. Because this person didn't appear to be scared of it. And it could only truly get angry if it could evoke fear. And its dragon's code would only allow it to get angry and to ramp up that aggression. If there was a return of aggression, In the first instance, the Dragon's Code only allowed intimidation. And so in frustration, the Dragon launched off into the air. And rapidly disappeared off into the sky. And this person continued to walk the princess to that castle. And just as the sun was setting, and everything was taking on a golden colour, they arrived at the castle. The drawbridge lowered. They were welcomed with open arms and smiling faces. They explained what had happened, where they'd been. Everyone was happy to see the princess home. And that the calmness of this person had saved the princess their calm way of handling things. And then almost like fog clearing in the morning, the reverie disappeared. And the person felt a sense of comfort, of peace, had lost track of time. And found their eyes opening on the edge of that lake. And they were curious what it was they were learning from that dream.
and then they saw this beam of light rising from the centre of the lake, which began to spread out from the centre of the lake towards them. It didn't seem to be moving anything, it didn't seem to have any substance. It just seemed like a beam of light spreading wider and wider until it engulfed them and continued spreading wider and wider. And then as it spread wider and wider, so they felt a sense of peace. They felt that somehow maybe the dream and this experience were connected although they didn't know how. And they started to see in this light the world in a new way. They started to understand the world in a new way. Although they didn't know consciously quite what way that was. And then the light started fading from the distance and narrowing down onto them. And the light began to shine around them, closer to their body, and closer and closer, until eventually the light was shining within them, and contained within them. And then once all the light was within their body, they could feel it pulsing through their body, that light somehow teaching their body something that their mind didn't yet know, something healing and helpful. And then before they journeyed back home through the woods, as the sun was beginning to set, they decided they would spend the night drifting, dreaming and sleeping on this warm night by the lake. And they drifted comfortably into a pleasant healing sleep.